And welcome, you're listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, Jeremy and I are going to be discussing how to train and defend yourself when you are not feeling your best. Uh, Which uh, you may have heard a little grunt there, Jeremy uh, is maybe uh, prepped. Uh, you became a method actor for this one today. Yes, that's exactly what's going on. Excellent, excellent. So uh, obviously, my name is not Jeremy Lesniak. I'm Andrew Adams, uh, and <clears throat> we here at Whistlekick, we everything we do is in support of traditional martial arts. Um, if you want to see everything we do, check out Whistlekick.com. That's the place where you can learn all about products, projects, things we're working on. It's kind of our online home. Um, it's also the easiest way to find out about any new things we have going on. And if you do go and purchase something you can use the code podcast 15 that's going to get you 15 percent off anything that we've got there in the store this show however it's got a separate website whistlekickmartialartsradio.com uh, we bring the show you to you twice a week and um you know our goal here at whistlekick is to connect educate and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world um, if you want to show your appreciation for what we do here there's a lot of ways you can do that you can make a purchase Follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere. You can also join us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash Whistlekick. It's a place where you can post, we, we post exclusive content. And if you contribute as little as like $5 a month, you'll get access to so much other stuff that we have here going on. If you want a list of all the ways you can help, as well as a constantly rotating mix of behind the scenes stuff and other fun content, you can check out whistlekick.com slash family. You gotta type it in, there's no link, direct link, you have to type it in. So, Jeremy. Yeah. How you feeling, buddy? Terribly. What's going on, man? I'm sick. Uh, and I think we need to say, I don't know why, because I'm sure there are people out there that are like, uh, should I be listening to this show? What if Jeremy has the, the dreaded plague? Um, you can't get it through audio or video. Yep. Don't worry. And do you know why? Um, if I was not sick, I could I could better explain immunology. It's because both of our computers have virus protection. Oh yes, that too. Ha ha. Yep. So uh, so you know we don't have to worry about anybody getting sick listening to this episode. Right. Uh, but you're feeling a little under the weather. I am. I am. I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, this is not good. So I'm in rescheduling, canceling as much as I could, but we needed to record an episode. Yeah, I have a, a philosophical approach that the problem is also the solution. If the problem is that I'm feeling like death, the solution is let's do an episode about martial arts and feeling like death. Yeah, because it's it sometimes happens. Haven't addressed. People yeah. get sick. Yeah, yeah. We've we've done episodes on training when you're hurt, or you're injured, you know, or sore, not feeling well, you know, in that regard, as from a physical capacity, but. Um, you know, and, and you know, you are physically sick, but you're not hurt, you're not injured, and that's different, you know. It, it is a dramatic difference. You know, when, when we talk about a physical injury, it's it's generally acute. There is a region of the body that is injured, and your approach tends to be how do I let that go and focus on other parts of my body? But what about right now when I can't think straight, I can't talk well, my whole body aches, I'm cold, and I want to go back to bed. Yeah, yeah. If we think about um, the opportunism of someone who might be mugging someone, you know, trying mm -hmm. to take advantage of a target, I'm a pretty good target right now. Yeah. And, you, you know, there's, there's something to be said for adrenaline, right? If you were approached on the street and mugged right now, um, adrenaline would likely kick in. Yep. But the reality is you're not going to be 100% no matter what. Not even close. No, I, I think when we factor in everything, I'm probably at 50 to 60 percent right yeah. now. Adrenaline might give me another 10 points, but my concern right now is that adrenaline would just make my brain cloudier. You know, we've all had an adrenaline response. We know what that feels like. Yeah. And we don't think clearly under adrenaline. I'm already not thinking clearly. For all I know, adrenaline would cause me to give the person my wallet. There you go. And my shoes. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to do your taxes? I don't know. Something ridiculous. 
<laughs> and and you you're probably not likely to think of the example of like just coughing on them make them sick you know yeah <coughs> excuse me <laughs> oddly enough that is probably my greatest defense right now is if i walked around given what has happened the last few years very few people would come near me that is true i, I would get a lot of really dirty looks now i'm not leaving the house but if i was to do so if i had to for who knows what some kind of emergency but the illness that I have, the type of illness that I have, which again, we don't know exactly what it is. I don't believe it's the thing. Sometimes there are milder versions. Maybe I'm not 50, 60%. What if I'm 85, 90%, yep. Yep. 75%. A lot of people at 85% are still going to work. Even 75%. You know, there are a lot of people out there who have jobs where you don't get sick time. Yeah. Yeah. And depending on what your quote unquote sickness is, uh, some people will still train. And we're not talking about the thing that's been going on the last couple of years. We're talking like you have a flu, you've got a cold that you're not feeling your best, right. still going and training or doing some training. Um, Potentially to be doing some training. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I was uh, home last all of last week quarantining myself at home. Mm -hmm. And, but I still worked out because I felt fine. You know, like I was sick. I wasn't going to go out in the public and I wasn't good enough to go to the school and do training with other people, but I was still able to work out on my own, <clears throat> but it's because I felt like it was not going to make things worse. And I think that's an important distinction. Right. And I think we all know that depending on the severity of, of an illness, movement can help you feel better. So finding, you know, as, as any um as with anything the right dose makes sense you know walking through some some forms slowly could be a good idea um hitting a makawara for an hour probably not yeah yeah and it's important to understand yourself enough to know that you have the mental capacity at the time to be able to do that stuff you know even though you are physically not 100 percent right now you also are aware enough that you're not mentally 100% either. And so trying to run through things in your brain is not going to work. Right. So which of the two things should we really dig into first, the, the, the training or the defending? Um, I, I think we should jump into the defending because I think it's a little more, I think it'll be a little easier to, to figure out. You know, the, the reality is you're not going to be at your top. And I don't mean you right now, just in general, if you are not feeling 100%, you're not going to work. Your body's not going to cooperate with yourself right. at 100%. And so what am I going to do with that? If I am literally or figuratively pushed into a corner and I have to respond, I'm going to be using the simplest things I can yep. in an effort to get away. I'm probably going to handle things a little bit differently. My voice is, is kind of shot. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to yell for help right now. Yep. Yep. But it's going to be a lot of really rough, gross eye pokes, ear pulls, throat pinches, groin mm -hmm. strikes. I would say you are more likely to do things. Okay. How do I say this? If I was approached on the street, I would be I would work hard to make sure that I didn't kill the other person, right? Mm -hmm. Putting it putting it bluntly, right? I'm gonna yeah. I don't want to kill the other person. I'm not gonna be working necessarily, I'm not gonna be thinking about eye gouges and fish hooks and things that are really gonna hurt the other person. But if I'm not at a hundred percent, I might have to think about that kind of stuff if my brain can handle that. Yeah, the rules of self-defense remain. You're trying to take care of yourself. Your safety is the priority over the attacker. And you have to work within the reality of the situation. If the reality of the situation is that you're pulling tools out of your, your bag that maybe you wouldn't normally, because that's what you've got to do in the given situation, then you do that. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we had a great couple of episodes with... Um, sergeant jason hamilton mm -hmm. about you, appropriate use of force and there's so many factors that go into that and you know your physical ability to 
continue to defend yourself is one of those factors, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and needs to be taken into account that if that's all you can do in order to keep yourself safe, then that's what you need to do. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a whole lot else there, you know, that we can, we, we can really talk about. Um, we, we hinted at it a bit tongue in cheek, but I, I think we should declare it a little more, more bluntly. Coughing on people is perfectly acceptable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, licking your hands and wiping them on them. You know, there's nothing um, off limits about being gross. The yeah. moment someone's trying to harm you, you do what you've got to do. And so use your assets. Now, the asset is concern over their well being because you are ill by all means. Well, and I think you've said this at least once. Nobody wants to fight crazy. Yep. It's true. You know, uh, if, if you come off as crazy, crazy doing things that you wouldn't necessarily people in general would not ordinarily do mm. that is off putting to other people. Mm -hmm. It's true. Good point. Yeah. So, I mean, that maybe that's the way to go. Now let's talk about, let's talk about training the other side, you yeah. know, like not, not being on the street and getting confronted. You're at home right now. Maybe you were planning on going to the to the gym today to work either work out or go to your school and do some training. Let's it's talk not about happening. that. It's not yeah. happening. I'm not for you. It's that. not happening because you are low enough at a low enough point that that it would be bad. Yeah. When we consider self defense and what self defense means, in this context, it means getting healthier as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Training for me is unlikely to help me heal faster what will being in bed yeah yeah and let's take out of the let's take out of the equation working with other people and getting them sure. sick like let that's off the table you wouldn't want to get other people sick but you know maybe w what you have isn't something that's super contagious right you just have a sickness right you're not feeling 100 percent working here's, out here's a great example what's that here's a great example chemotherapy yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. You know, like I'm not going to get other people sick. I've trained in plenty of schools where someone has been in, you know, early stages of cancer treatment, and they want to come to class and they want to do what they can. Yeah. Until they can't. Yeah. Yep. And there gets to be a threshold, a level where your body is just not going to function correctly, and you actually could do yourself harm by trying to better yourself right you're you're going to class because you want to be better you know you're trying to better yourself but in that process you could actually be doing your body some harm and if nothing else you are likely conditioning your body to remember repetitions of exercises that are not at your best yeah if you want to get faster you have to do techniques fast if i train fast, quote unquote, fast techniques, slowly, I make myself slower. And the same thing would apply to every measurable or, or subjective uh, quality to our martial arts. If I, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm doing forms and let's say, you know, I've got a tournament coming up, but it's weeks out, mm -hmm. I'm not practicing my form. Yeah. Unless... I'm trying to practice remembering it. Maybe I don't know it well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can work that part of it. But if I know it really well, right now, I'm not working on that. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. You're not doing, you're certainly not doing yourself any good. Right. Now, how do we as individuals know where that's, where that level is? That's the question. Mm. Air on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. If you're unsure, go low, right? Um, I would imagine most people have been ill often enough that they know what illness feels like. They know, oh, I feel like crud. I'm going back to bed. I, I don't think too many people are waking up and going, I feel like crud. I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, nobody feeling like I'm feeling is going anywhere. Um, but it comes back to your why. Why do you want to train? What's your condition? And being conservative. 
being honest. Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest thing is being honest with yourself yeah. and not trying to cheat yourself. You know, give your body the opportunity to heal it. You know, it needs to, it needs to recuperate, you know, uh, and that can't happen if you're continually pushing your body when it's not in a state that's ready to be pushed. Very true. Yeah. Anything else? I, I, man, I don't think so. I mean, I can't think of anything else. I know you can't think of anything. I else. definitely can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, there we go. I mean, it's kind of a shorter episode today. People will, you'll understand why, you know, um, Jeremy's not feeling well. It happens. Um, but we, Whistlekick, it's important to talk about this stuff. Uh, and this led into a great thing to think about. If we missed anything, you're yeah. listening and you're like, hey, guys, you didn't think of this. Let us know. Tell us. I'm Set sure G- I missed something. Yeah, it happens. You can contact Jeremy at Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. You can contact me, Andrew at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com. You know, you can either comment on the YouTube video, you can go in a Facebook group, which you should join if you're not a member of. Um, <clears throat> you can check out show notes for this episode at uh, at the website, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com. You can find videos, links, social media, pictures. If, you know, in this case, it's just video, but. Um, if you're down to support us and all of our work, you've got so many options to do. You might consider buying one of our Amazon books, telling others about the show, supporting us uh, at patreon.com slash whistlekick. Um, you, you can use the code podcast 15, get 15% off anything we sell. Um, am I missing anything? You can hit us on social media. We're at whistlekick pretty much everywhere. Yeah. No, you're not missing anything. Not that all I can right. think of anyway. Well, you can't think of anything at all. I can't think of anything. So, all right. So, that's what we got, guys. Until next time, train hard, smile, Smile, and have have a great great day. day.